Ladies and gentlemen, the 26th episode of the Drop Podcast. And I'm a little bit ill today, but I got two guests, luckily, that do have a voice. So, uh, first of all, welcome Mr. Rogue Wolf and Mr. Tell. Uh, I need to fix your image, Tell, but other than that, Tell, can you tell me a little bit about what, what you are? Who are you? I am a human being. You talk, yeah? Because <laughs> what am I? Yeah, I do have a voice, you know? People may know that from past instances of this drop podcast. Uh, I like to play this Planet Side 2 game. I've played only two games of Arena. Um, yeah, so I know a little bit about it. Not that much, obviously, but uh, yeah. And, uh, I like Planet Side 2, even though there are a lot of things that concern me. Yeah. And you played the game for quite a while, right? How many hours do you have uh, in the game? Yeah, and, uh, not a 4,000, so yeah. It's, uh, it's okay, that's quite a lot. around quite a while, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Rokulf, what can we say about you? I am also a human, for all that you know. Mm -hmm. And I <laughs> played about four matches of uh, Planetside Arena before uninstalling it. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I've got four games, I've got two games, and um, I played around 50 games of PSA. Just um, for your record, uh, today we'll try to have a little bit of a healthy debate about Planetside 2 and Planetside Arena. Um, I'm from healthy. the... I'm from the I Like camp, and we got two guys below me that are from the... I like it a bit less camp, <laughs> let's say it like this. Anyway, uh, our first topic of today is the launch week. Uh, last uh, Thursday, not not the last one, but the week, the week before, the game launched, and well, to say the least, it was a bit underwhelming. There were, I think, at maximum fifteen hundred players. Did you guys play on the launch day, by the way? No. Um, don't know if it was on launch day, but uh, I played, you know, a couple of days before. Um, but yeah, I also uninstalled like Rogue Wolf. Um, because it didn't like, it didn't really uh, like, catch my interest that much. But uh, yeah, so not really that much experience. But I, I have a yeah, I've played enough of it to know that it's not enough for me yet. Maybe in the future, but uh, at this point, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I think right now the main game mode is Battle Royale. Uh, have you played yeah. Battle Royale games in the past? Both of you? Um, one game of Fortnite and yeah, no, <laughs> don't think so. Yeah, I played one match of Apex and uninstalled that. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. Apex. So you lost three matches longer with Arena, that's already a good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but for the record, would you guys have bought the game if it came out with a pay to play price? Absolutely not. No, nope. same, same here. I would have say I have to, I have to say I I always I also doubted buying the game, but uh, in the end it ended up free to play. Do you think that's the best move for Arena or? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, I think so. Who would like legitimately right? There's a, there would be maybe a couple of people that would buy it, but who like you need numbers for that? You know, you need. A lot of people to buy that to make money off of it, and as I see it, there was not like nowhere near enough um, marketing, n not nearly enough work or content in the game, and content that is um, you know bug free or that that works like the performance and the whole it's it's very bare bones at the moment. There's like two modes. There's now even one mode. The play count is very low. It's like it could be a good thing, but not in this way, in my opinion. So yeah, it lacks, I it lacks buy content it. and lacks players at the moment. So yes, that's why it, free to play it is content. Like, yeah, it's very very bare bones. It's a map and a game mode. That's it. And also a thing about the whole um, statistical thing about the guns. There's like bars for the guns, like. We want numbers. At least certain people want numbers. And it's better for everyone because you can immediately say, okay, this gun is, has this damage, this rate of fire, this 
you know, whatever, uh, recoil, uh, you know, um, whatever name it is, like the, the recoil, the aimed, the hip fire, etc. moving, all that stuff, right? If it's just a, a, a bar on your screen with a color in it, okay, it goes to there. And how, how, how far does it go on the other gun? Oh, now I need a ruler because it's so tiny that I can't, you know, it doesn't work. What do you think is a ripple? Yeah, it's basically the same as, as no statistics at all for the weapon. Yeah. It's, it's not informative. Yeah, it's just like, come on, guys. It's, <clears throat> you don't need to, let, let's see, they, what I would think they would say is like, yeah, let's ask the players. Well, you don't have to ask the players to see that that is, you know, numbers are better than a, a graph or a, a you know, a, a picture or something. I would like to see both, like have the graph, but then in the graph have have the number. I think that would be the perfect solution. Like if, yeah, for I've example, the health that. bar. Hmm? Like in the health bar in Planet Side 2, you can also choose to get numbers. There are still yeah. players that don't play with the numbers in the health bar, but I, I, I just don't understand. Yeah, same. But for the... Right, the difference though is, for the health and um, in relation to the guns, or the statistics on guns, is that when you see the health bar, you know how, you know, for a quick glance you see how much health you have. But if you're looking at the statistic page for guns, you want to see it exactly. Like you don't need to only look that split second to know if you can back up or go in more, right? So it's much more important to have the numbers on the on the the gun thing, even though it's it's very um, very good that they did it, you know, in Planet Two for the health thing, um, it should have been implemented for a longer time, in my opinion. But on the gun thing, it's absolutely like, come on, it's the basic stuff that needs to be there, and yeah, that come on, they break. I do think that's actually a big basic. problem, and that's that you just don't know how much health you have in Planet Side Two. It's quite clear; you have like thousand health. And you can mm -hmm. use certain implants or certain, uh, not implants, you can use certain shields or armor to increase that or decrease that. Uh, yeah. But in Planet Arena, it's like you have a legendary shield, you got the blue shield, you got the oh, epic yes. shield. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I know there's a difference. I know the bigger, the better. Uh, the better, the bigger. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. what exactly yeah, it is, I have n no clue. And I w that would be fine if, if, if there was something like a virtual reality training room. Or what I would prefer, in the lobby, where you don't have anything to do, in the waiting room, yeah. uh, have something to shoot. Because then you get a feel, at least, for the, for, the, for, the, for the damage you do. And I personally do not really care about... Numbers in the end don't do damage. It's in the end... Um, how do you say this? Like, numbers are fine for min-maximizing, have like a theoretical damage output. But in the end, it's about actually hitting people. Mm -hmm. More, uh, it's more about skill than numbers. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, you know, I've, I've got to say, as far as like if the game would be put on sale for a price. Uh, see, the thing is, I'm I'm gonna come out and say it. I'm not a big fan of battle royale. It doesn't really appeal to mm -hmm. me too much. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's <sighs> arena does bring some new stuff to battle royale. There's a couple of things it does right, I think, that improves on a lot of the other games, but the um, the market's just way too swamped for anything that's yeah. um, pay to play come exactly. out. Now. Definitely, yes, I agree one hundred percent. Because the other options, you know, for the for all the cool nine year olds, there's Fortnite, right? Mm -hmm. Or for the streamers that want uh, to go on the bandwagon or the hype or whatever, and then for the you know, you have Apex Legends, which is free. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's like, it's a completely different thing. Like, it's much better on the performance. It has, it's, it's, it's just more, um, how do you say, more polished and better marketed everything. The whole, uh, everything about it. Planet Side is just, I would love to see succeed, succeed, right? But... Mm -hmm. And as much as I want to be positive, like Daybreak, I'm not this salty guy that just, you know, oh, like I'm going to downvote your game on Steam because, you know, I'm salty or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
I just want it to be good. And there are certain things that it doesn't matter if they have this new thing or wow, we we make this battle royale game, but we do something else with it. No, you need to have the core foundation that needs to be good. If it's not there, then all those potential players that are playing Apex or Fortnite anyway, <laughs> they don't care about that. They don't yeah. care if you have a Harris or, or a Vanguard, you know, or whatever, that they probably won't even know how to control mm-hmm. if the game is terrible, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they they said on, like, before the original launch, launch in January, XD, <laughs> they said, uh, we have this battle royale, massive clash, team deathmatch, capture the flag, you know, king of the hill, all these Game modes, uh, outfit versus outfit, you know, mm-hmm. everything, all right? And they said, it's not only a battle royale game, we have a big scope for this game, all right? And then they are silent for a couple of months, then they bring out a game that is only battle royale, and then, like, it's, it's so typical of Daybreak to me. But to be that, fair, it, you know that it's basic stuff that they don't, they just don't do it. Come on, guys. They they can still fulfill that promise because the game launched in early access, so that means that the game isn't done yet. So, <laughs> yeah, in yeah, quarter but... two of twenty twenty, they actually you want to see team that much, right, or something like that, like infantry versus I, infantry. Yeah, I, I just want they, a solid game mode. Yeah, so, and you know? in quarter four of twenty nineteen, Thunderdomes should be launching. And from what I know right now, some of them should be Sundara versus Sundara, uh, infantry. Mm-hmm. And then the first Sunday that dies, that uh, loses the game. Okay. And and how okay so how it right, works that's... exactly, that's one of the rumors we had so yeah, far. But the thing is the thing is, right? Like it's all well and good that uh, it's early access now. Nah, next year we're gonna we have a roadmap and you know, next year is gonna officially launch, right? hmm But the thing is, <laughs> Sundara versus Sundara, yeah, you have one Sunday here, there, and then one is that. Look, you have all this stuff in Planet Side 2, right? Like, I'm not a developer. I have no clue how the fuck that shit works, right? Sorry, by the way, for the... No, I don't want to... <laughs> but the, the thing is, what many <laughs> infantry players don't like about Planet Side 2 is that there is too much shit in the game. There are maxes, yeah. there are uh, airplanes, there are tanks. That ruins yeah, the infantry experience. And yeah, that is what exactly I mean... what Sonodome can offer. It can offer infantry versus infantry without the bullshit. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is that they have it in... <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's over 9,000 Kafka. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you have it in Planet Side. I'm not saying that we should, you know, oh, go on Diego, set up a, two Sundays and fight, you know? I'm not saying that. What, I'm, what I find so puzzling is that why does it take so long to make it? You have, <laughs> you know, you have all that stuff. Like, it's just copy pasted what is there basically with a couple of things on the top of it right good evening there i, I, I am i'm not a game developer so i wouldn't know how much yeah, same time for it me costs, but, but it just it, it, it's 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 so weird to me how can they say in december we're gonna launch january and then with all the game modes right and mm-hmm. then like five months later they go oh yes we made the game but it's an early access uh, and we only have battle royale and you know and 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 like guys how could you even have to get the idea in your head daybreak that you could launch this game in january and then february so they even delayed it one month right or a month and a half and then they it takes a while and then even then it's only so bare bones come on guys like it's just it's so saddening to me. Like they could do so many things. The gunplay in this game is absolutely amazing, and then they change it up with legendary shields and you know all this stuff that changes it up. Like guys, come on, the basic is there. You only need to make a couple game types. You know, spawn points, boom, game type, hop there, and then go play, right? And then let the community give feedback so you can improve on these things. You don't even have to think yourself. You just have to. Do what the community says in line with the post, you know, the options you have, right? If it's impossible, then of course you can't do it. But if it is, then, you know, come on, Daybreak. Interaction, you know, Twitter game, everything. 
Let's go yeah, back so to the, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, one major thing that we're not dealing with a new engine or new assets or anything like this. A lot of this is just ported straight over from Planet Side 2. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I don't think it's a bad thing yeah, in itself. Not. not in itself, no, but I mean, it's not. It's yeah. Not, it, it kind of um, it belies the excuse that, you know, it's, it's really tough work to having to reinvent everything from scratch. I mean, a lot of this is just like coding. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, it runs a lot better than Planet Side 2. Still, it isn't the best because I expect in 2019 to have a game looking that bad or that different, that old. To be running at 200 frames, but still, if you compare it to Planet Side 2, which shadows on with the, the new graphics quality. I don't know. For me, it runs. I, I had very... the exact opposite. Yeah. Really? Same. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It runs um, much worse. And Under the same fun. same general settings as I would have gotten about like eighty to hundred frames in Planet Side Two, I was dipping below seventy, and at one mm -hmm. point after I'd been respawned, I was running at twenty nine. Yeah, it's and okay. That's that's strange. Yeah, this I have is me been, just going yeah. around, but um, honestly, I think it's because they increased the render distance so much. Mm -hmm. You can only reduce it to three thousand at least, and. I think the reason they did that was because they really want to show off those skyboxes. And if you reduce yes. the render range down too far, they go away. Well, what do you play in Planet Side 2? What kind of running distance? Uh, about a thousand. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I played yeah, 200. I, I never fly. I never fly, so I keep 150. the thousand. <laughs> Looks kind of nice. Yeah. But then, like, even if it's like if you play on thousand, and then it <laughs> takes that much of a drop in Planet Side Arena. Like, I play on uh, one fifty in Planet Side Two. So I guess it's also a bit my PC. But like, even <clears throat> the other thing, right? Like, yeah, maybe it's my PC, right? So that's that's just me. That's not the game. But mm -hmm. the fact that it's only able to, <laughs> yeah, that they don't go lower than medium graphics or some stuff in Planet Side Arena. Come on, guys. Like, what is it? You might as well just give me a PS4 emulator and so I can run it on, you know? Come on. <laughs> just give me all the, give me the options. Let me, you know, turn down the render distance, turn down all the, all the stuff I don't need, you know? There are different plays in this game. There's people that want to look at the sky and then get blasted by an orbital strike. Uh, so fine, I don't, I have no, you know, no problem with that. But I don't want to be that guy. I just want to shoot people. You I know? think people they are afraid that people see the the potato setting like Planet Side Two settings. That people yeah. are afraid that the game just is bad. Just yeah, I understand the graphics. that. But the, the problem, so this is already the problem, right? And this is a bit of like a psychological thing. Like if you are not confident in your game, come on, you know, if they are confident in their game, then there would be no problem to show low graphics. Because if the game is fun to play, right? To move your mouse at your keys and to shoot people and get shot at. To communicate with the people. Oh, we go here. Oh, the circle is uh, whatever. This smaller. You know, I don't like it, but people do, right? Mm -hmm. You see the popularity of the, the genre. But then, if they are not confident in that, then they should just make the game better. I, it's I do so think that easy. I do think that devs are think that the core gameplay that that is fine because they keep saying that the core gameplay that's fine. Or they keep figuring about the UI, they keep thinking about the performance. Those are the things that they want to see improve. But I also agree with them that the core gameplay is fine from a Battle Royale well, perspective, right? I, I see that um, you guys want to see T TDM and stuff, but from a Battle Royale perspective, no, the I, core gameplay is fine. Even with like, I mean the legendary with the core shoots. gameplay is, is movement. The, the, the shooting, shooting movement. Recoil, you know, exactly, that, so. exactly. Yeah. I mean, the major problems I ran into were, um, like, movement was janky, vehicle mm -hmm. weapons were supremely janky, I could not track targets for anything, even with a halfway decent frame rate. I mean, it was a lot, it's a lot easier to do so in Planet Side 2 with equivalent frame rates. So, mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand what the problem was that. And I also had problems determining where I was getting hit from. Hmm. 
it seemed to be a, a kind of difficult to pin down exactly where fire was coming from when I was getting hit. A lot more than in Planet Side 2. Hmm, I don't know. I didn't really have that problem. So mm -hmm. I only played like two games. And in the first one, uh, I dropped out of my drop pod, got killed by Dr. Psycho. He poked me on Discord. Hey, nah. hey, Pumas. And then he said, no, let's play together. And then we won one game. And I was like, yeah, this game is not for me. So I, do have to say I, I don't know. You yeah. know, in how much that is a is a problem of the game or an individual problem. You know, not saying you're bad, but because I don't know, but you know, it's just all yeah. It could right? just be me. It could just be it me the could, way I was yeah. perceiving it. Potentially. Yeah. And also the the time to kill you die a lot slower than in Planet Side Two, so oh, yeah. you should be able yeah. to react <laughs> at least in time. That is also one of the things I enjoy. Uh, Sometimes in Planet Side 2, the time to kill, it's, it's, I think it's fine in Planet Side 2, but at least every every battle, every engagement in Planet Side Arena is mm -hmm. very fair. Every 1v1 feels very fair. But, but, yeah, but, okay, how is it fairer, or more fair, or whatever, I don't know how to say that, but how can Arena be fairer if it's all with these random pickups that's what i don't understand about right uh, the appeal of battle royales right mm. in plan side 2 everyone is the same apart from a couple class specific um, ability right you have to understand so this that the plan side arena runs with uh, an economy and everyone can use their economy the nanites in the game to upgrade to at least the purple shield so in the mm. end game the majority of people have the early and the purple shield so in that part it is pretty fair but then uh, how is it fairer than plan side 2 if you know, well, no so, heavies, no no shotguns, no yeah, okay, no I infiltrators, think, okay, those, those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no one shot kills, so no. There we go. No, no, no Dalton wanted kill, right? Well, <laughs> oh wait, oh, oh, yikes! We so already... from the infantry perspective, Ooh. that is what I like about the game, and I hope they keep <laughs> yeah. that. But what do you guys think about the time to kill? Is it preferable Planet Side Two or Planet Side Arena? Um. I'd say both fit within the respective game. Mm -hmm. In that, um, basically, the longer the time to kill gets, the more time you have to react to being jumped or surprised by an opposing player and either react or get out of the firefight and reset the engagement. So it, re it rewards, like, different skill sets. Like, lower TTK is if you can get your crosshairs on a head and get that burst damage out before they have a chance to react. Longer TTK? You get if somebody starts shooting at you, you can turn around, focus on their head, <laughs> get better shots in, and you win the engagement. Yeah, I mean, yes, but I feel that in Planet Side Two, it's already like yeah, if you make perfect headshots all the time, then it's gonna be pretty damn fast, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you body shot, and most people do body shot. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The vast majority. Like there are only a couple of players that really, that are essentially quote unquote good, and the rest is all bad. And they, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not a oh, tell you being you this or that again. Yeah, but it's true. Come on, face mm -hmm. it. You know. So is it really like in? I feel in Planet Side Two, it's it's already good. Like if you take like Call of Duty, like I don't know the new oh, one, yeah. but like all the ones, it's just like. I don't know how yeah, many like, bullets, but it's like instantly you're dead. Like, you look at a guy, like, dead. Like three or four body shots. Yeah, exactly. You're just gone. Yeah, and in Planet Side, you need to get like four headshots, and otherwise it takes like seven or eight, depending on mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the damage of the weapon. But yeah, exactly. Filthy. Mm -hmm. Making TTK too high makes movement irrelevant. Yeah. So it needs to be a balance, and I think all this, like this really high TTK, I think it's it's perfect in Planet Side, honestly with the recall mechanics and everything. So I don't know why they why they need to change it up, you know. Again, what I said earlier about just take the stuff that's good from Planet Side 2. Just I mean, if you're going to copy anything, you know, you might as well just copy it straight away and, you know, because people are going to notice it anyway even if you put a layer on top of it, right? On the weapons or the map or like Echoes of Emmerich. Everyone knows it's Emmerich, right? Everyone that played Planet Side 2 of, you know, a couple hundred hours, that knows the map a little bit, they, oh, this is the Ascent, oh, this is, uh, uh, whatever, like, uh, oh, this is, you know, what you have to pass, you know, uh, NC Arsenal, whatever, you see it and you know it, so, 
and then also with all the models and the, the, the combat and stuff, if you're going to copy it, just copy it and move your assets elsewhere. Like, make another game type. Because if the player count is going to be so low like it is at the moment, then you better have, like, a, a small numbers game type ready so those players don't have to wait all the time to queue up in the 300 player match so they can go game with the other people if you know if the, because if the play card is so low you like how can you how can you make that battle royale match with the player count uh one, one thing uh matches don't wait until 300 players they just start so what happens now mainly is games start with 60 to 100 players that's i think the majority of games yeah. right now 60. yeah yes. the 300 well, thing was just a manual thing by mm. the devs they were they were manually withholding the yes game start until they got that many people in it. Yes. yeah yeah well but uh, in theory they want every game to have 300 players but uh, yeah just... of course but in theory they also want to have a good game <laughs> you know hey i'm uh, sorry but it's just how it is you know like in theory in theory, I, I saw the, I read the whole thing about the update or whatever. They said like, oh, we have this grand scope. We want to make interplanetary battle in space and between different planets. So you might even venture out and, uh, you know, encounter new law, you know. Guys, you know, it's all theory and like, you know, in, the, in your head, above in the, you know, it's, it's like a religious guy saying like oh i believe you know i believe i don't care what you believe i want to have a game that is good and if you well, make the a game, good game is good i will pay <laughs> no it's it's too little and it's too late right. like, come on daybreak just get, get it man what i, what know, I personally and, and... like a lot and like you, you mentioned what, what rng game, picking like? picking up like things that is rng in battle royales and you don't like that in planet arena you start with weapons and i think it already makes the first engagements a lot more fun because it is not Hey, I got a pistol and you got an AK, I lose. That's one of the good things they, they figured out, and it's quite unique. They don't use an inventory system that makes the game feel janky. And there are many little small things that make the game actually in core very good. For example, the personal vehicle. But, like, yeah, things like performance, it lacks game modes, but mainly it lacks players. So therefore, it lacks marketing. Yeah, but the, the, look, the, why it lacks players, right? Marketing. They... Not because the game and is the bad. Game. No. The, yeah, exactly. They need to make a good game. Look at the old Halos, right? Mm -hmm. Th those were superb games. And those old games, they, they kept having players years after they were launched. And then Halo 4 comes around, and guess what? It just starts to... Like, it has a couple hundred thousand <laughs> or million players or whatever. I don't have the exact numbers, but it had like re like the same play count as Halo 3 after a year or something, Halo 4 or its launch. And then after like a couple of weeks, it just boom, it went down because the game is not good. And you could have all the marketing and all the, you know, uh, E3 reveal trailers, uh, tryout sessions, the Halo Pro saying this is the best game I've ever played, you know. It's not gonna matter if the game is bad and Daybreak needs to listen to the people make the game how they essentially want. But to we do they need to listen. And then they need to listen, make a good game, and then people are not gonna review Bomb it, you know. There's all these problems like you could say, Oh, it's salty people on the internet. But if you make a good game, people are gonna love it. Look at C D Project Red and I know of course it's a much bigger studio. But the principle is still the same. If you make a good game, people are going to like it. And they want to buy that game. And they want to, you know, invest in it and support you. But if you yeah. don't make a good game, people are going to call you out for it. And yeah, then you get a lot of, you know, salt on See, top the of thing you. Is, the thing is, marketing gets players. The gameplay keeps players. Yeah. Exactly. So if you don't have good marketing, that can hurt. But if you don't have a good game, that will kill everything. Yeah. I, I think it's also a chicken egg story because the game yeah. to perform yeah. its best needs 300 players. And because it doesn't get 300 players, the game is yeah. half-baked. Yeah, but, but <laughs> no, no, the game is half-baked and then people play it and no, oh, it's just half-baked. I'm not going to play. I'll go back to Apex Legends. Exactly. Wrong game. The developers make the game. They then the publisher or 
Daybreak is like the publisher and the developer. So, okay, let's say Daybreak makes a game. Then if they make a good game, they going to tell everyone, oh, guys, we made a good game. We're going to iron out all the bugs in the next two months, and we're going to launch it. But they already, they should already have the good game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Shut up, you nugget. <laughs> and then when they launch it, people are going to, oh, this is great. We're going to tell our friends. And then all the people come, and it's a good game. But not the other way around. Come on. Hmm. Yeah? It, it may have been a mistake to launch with a mode that requires so many people in order to feel good. Well, the game is okay from 100 players on. I think if it goes below 100, it's it's too big the map. Too big for at least planet site. But I, I think we just we clearly disagree because I'm a better better real player, and I think right now, again, the core gameplay is good. And I play planet. I play PUBG in the early access stage, and I know I know that. <laughs> Games and early access can change a lot. The only question I have is always, can I trust Daybreak to also change that much? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's, as somebody who generally doesn't enjoy Battle Royale, Arena actually made it more appealing to me than most other games have. But there's just so many underlying problems that it pushes yeah. me away from that. But can, can you be more specific on the underlying problems? I'm, I'm uh, curious. Well, yeah, the, the problem that the game suffers if the match uh, attendance is small and all, all of the technical issues that I ran into, it is not enjoyable to have gun battles in Arena in most cases just because everything feels so janky, so unresponsive, so stuttery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really FPS problems in your case, or...? It's not just FPS problems. Like I said, the, the controls felt unresponsive even when my um, frames were decent. Okay. It just... Mm doesn't it doesn't feel like it flows it feels like it jerks around and stutters okay is maybe is it maybe also the range at engagement at engagements uh you know that it's it's too far out most of the time at least mm. that's that's a thing for me i, I don't like yeah the that's it's the typical things in battle royale games you tend to stay away a bit more but you can choose to go aggressive thanks to the personal vehicle which and of course the jetpack abilities it's uh, it's, yeah. it's a battle royale thing that you often have like long range engagements. Yeah, the, see, the mobility is one of the things I enjoy about it. The fact that you can be daring, try to close in on your enemies, and you've got some tools to do it with. Mm, yeah, but I, I mean, do you really have tools for that? Like the jetpack, right? Does it really cater to a long range playstyle? Because mm, no, yeah. You know, the the jetpack caters more to like verticality and yeah, but that's not yeah. actually travel. Okay, well, but the ability to okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just curious. Uh, you the guys haven't played within the Trino play events, have you? Just no, you I just didn't. played during the normal I just times. Played the 300 yeah. ones now. No, no, okay. Because I, I think uh, yeah, it's hard to explain. But if you have like a coordinated squad, it does feel like. Playing ops, with, for example, uh, now fit in Planet Side Two. But look, that's the problem, right? That that's that's already a problem because you see, you say it feels no, like playing you, ops with an outfit. Well, if no, it but, feels like that, you could just go to no, Planet no, Side. You, you have to you have to let me finish in this one because oh, in Planet Side okay. Two, you you place you place for example, you get a galaxy and people can just respawn in the galaxy. People get like a Sundra, they respawn in the Sundra. If you yeah. die in Planet Side Arena, you die. And if you're lucky, of course, you can get respawned in uh, by uh, revived by a friendly, or you can respawn in a terminal. But if you die, you the squad, if the squad, co the squad cohesion is a lot better in an arena. Hmm. But the thing I think what draws people into Planet Side Two, and what I like about Planet Side Two is not not squads of twelve. No, no, it is um, platoons, platoons of of sixty, or I don't know how many guys can place in another platoon. But the big scale, that massive scale, that is what I think makes Planet Side Two shine. And the mm -hmm. squad play is what makes Planet Side Arena shine. Mm. It was my experience that unless there was some kind of comms discipline, things got a lot more chaotic in in squads. You couldn't tell who was talking to who. There's no no indicator as to which person's yeah, talking. I agree. I mean, yeah. I spent I spent one match um, following the orders of somebody I thought was my tank driver, but it turned out <laughs> somebody completely different. Oh man, yeah, the, those are some of the underlying problems that just 
Like, there is no excuse for that to be in the game at this point. Yes, like, I you agree. Could say, you could have all the betas at early X and all the, you know, excuses, but in, in Plants Like 2, all those things have been looked at, have been changed, have been improved on, right? So the, And it's the same studio. And even then, if something has been done in another game that you look, that you see, hey, this is good, then let's make it into our game. Give a little twist to it so you don't copy-paste. But, you know, it's in the same studio, guys, Daybreak. Just there's no excuse for not having that. That's not a, a, a mechanical issue or anything. It's just put an icon on the, next to the guy that's talking. It just come on. Like, there's no excuse for that to not be in the game, even if it's early access. That's a good point. I, I do have to agree that the layout and the the actually finding the person you want to, to, to go to, to the number, it's really unclear. And mm -hmm. that's something they need to yeah. work on. Um, especially because they do have the the uh, the example of, of Apex Legends, how to do it, how to actually make a good pinging system. Mm -hmm. That is a not really an excuse to not do to not have it right now. I think that's not every, 2019 ready. Every first person or third person shooter on the market should be trying to find a way to copy that in some way, shape, or form. Well, at least I know Planet Side Two has their own squat lead system, don't they? Like with the with the circle thingy to like select bases to go to or points. At least yeah, have some can, something from Planet Side Two. You can you can draw on the map. Uh, I don't know how many people actually use that. Uh, I think Probably they use to no to draw like <laughs> genitals. But... <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So it would be Anzac. Anzac would do that with his five something gigahertz. You know? Okay. Um, well, you guys, you, you just think the overall experience so far wasn't. Was it what you expected? Was it better than you expected? Or. How was it? <laughs> What did you expect beforehand? I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, uh, you go first, Goku. I haven't got much, really. Like I said, I don't really play Battle Royale games, so I didn't have much in the way of expectations coming in. Uh, like I said, it was, the gameplay actually kind of appealed to me, but the technical issues dragged it down. I mean, if, it, if they polished it, I mean, even just to the point as uh, Planet Side 2 runs, I'd find it more appealing. <laughs> Polish it like Planet Side 2. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. That's, that's not the highest bar to clear, I know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I, I will say the one time I played Apex, technical issues were not any part of the reason I didn't want to keep playing. I mean, that okay. game polished to a sheen. It ran beautifully. Everything worked. I mean, it was like a full, cohesive, good experience, at least on the technical side. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's hope in 2020 when the game really releases that the technical perspective yeah. will be better. Yeah. And it has more content, of course. Uh, I, I kind of want to talk about the Halloween update. Have you guys read the patch uh, notes for the Halloween update? I have not. Or have you guys experienced some, it in the past? I saw something about that you get a random loot drop or something when you, when you kill a pumpkin, right? And that the rare items are rarer and the common items are more common, so it's easier for people to get them. Um, I haven't read it fully, though, but that's what I read. Is it something you enjoy to do? Hunting pumpkins? Yeah, man, I'm a main pumpkin <laughs> guy. Every year I come back to the game, I take my ESF and my note gun. At 3 a.m. when nobody's playing, I go and I can't get killed by bling because, hey, they're not online, right? Uh, no. I mean, I like the cosmetics, but all that search for pumpkins, <laughs> no, it's not for me. I'm, I'm not opposed to it in principle, but the problem is that it draws a lot of people away from the actual battles, which is what the rest of us are there for. Yeah, that's true. So it's not helping the game, really. Wait, I've just, just good to go back to Bling, did Bling disband? No, it's, it's, it's something they break it because... Uh, uh, Bird had a rank Untermensch in the outfit as a joke, and then Daybreak was like, "Yeah, let's hit the delete button on the outfit." So they got wait, wait, wait. So, 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 wait. Yeah, Daybreak obvious, actually did, deleted an no, outfit. Yes, Daybreak did. Daybreak okay, wait a minute. That, that is actually a pretty big thing because why should a why why should a, the Daybreak as a company intervene with outfits in in the game? 
Oh, they have now. Okay, they have separated now. Okay. See, I'm out of the loop. There you go. And Zach, why are you not on the podcast, dude? With that big 5.2 gigahertz uh, drawing on the map. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Old news, as I already said. But Okay. Yeah, back to the whole pumpkin thing. Because you guys removed You guys? The chat. Hey, that's not me, man. Oops. I'm just... Hey, I'm on Faber's podcast. It's Faber's thing. <laughs> Don't didn't, look at didn't me, dude. Ask, <laughs> didn't ask want to come on the podcast, but literally, everyone on Reddit is so vocal about, I hate the game, they shouldn't have made it, they shouldn't have put any resource in the game. But the minute somebody wants to actually have a discussion about it, like, offers a place, nobody actually shows up. It's, it's like it's the really 95SS guy that trash talks the good players with their 1KD, you know? The moment yeah. they play, they get clapped. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Yeah, they, it, it's a lot easier to shout into an echo chamber than to have an actual discussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know a lot about that echo chamber, but yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah our, our, I got to see a comment from Filthy. They can delete outfits from with racist names and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. I don't write now racist names in the in the outfit section, really. Uh, I, I don't know. Some, I wouldn't mind if they deleted some player names, but I've never seen any outfit names with no? like anything wrong with them. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe that's <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Good, Anzac. But okay, uh, Rogue Wolf, do you enjoy the Halloween events? Probably not. I, there's not really any draw to them for me. There's like nothing in there that I want, and it just kind of takes away from what I'm there to play the game for. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just curious, what are you there for to play the game? Is it... I'm there for the big battles. The I, big I battles. Wanna, yeah. I want to test my skills and improve myself. Okay. And pumpkins don't shoot back. No, no. <laughs> if the pumpkin <laughs> shot back, maybe I'd be interested. You, you, can, you live in the United States, That, that would right? be PvE. Shoot at, <laughs> hey, but you can shoot Trump, right? And then there's a lot of people that's going to oh, shoot. Okay, oh, let's, let's, not let's not talk about this. Let's not talk about this. We're talking about plants, by the way, yeah? Mm. Orange pumpkins. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> FBI. <laughs> <laughs> together, up, together with the update, they also uh, brought in some new guns, or well, not new guns, they brought in new skins. Um, what do you guys think about the Planet Arena skins? I haven't looked at them. Uh, it is basically the new Damio. Uh, the yeah. Damio is, by the way, Damio, whatever, how you pronounce it. Uh, it's the new Archer skin. So not a new gun, not a Damio skin, but an Archer skin. Mm -hmm. And the uh, NS11A got a new skin as well from Arena. Daimyo. It's Daimyo. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Daimyo. Who is this Mio guy? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, you know, in itself, I don't see this problem, but in the grand scheme of the whole planet side daybreak thing, that I think they should focus on, as I said, like, <laughs> so many times already. Just fix the game. Fix the max stuff. And the whole... Well, it's easier to copy a gun than fix the whole game. <laughs> yeah, but if they... Look, <clears throat> this is the problem, right? If they're gonna say for a year, every... So every two or three months, they're gonna say, yeah, but this time... Next next time, we're gonna fix bugs. So they don't even say that. But let's say every two months, they say, we're gonna... Next time, we're gonna fix it. But this stuff is a little bit... is easier now. So we're gonna put our resources into this for the moment. But then they always say the same stuff. So okay. they're never going to change the buff. They're just going to bring, quote-unquote, new content, even though it's just a reskin of old content. But what are the big so, bugs that actually annoy you the most right now? Uh, what annoys me the most is, is deep crouch and just Maxis laying on the ground. That is the... Yeah. And I, I can't really think of anything now because I haven't really played that much recently, but just... Yeah, reload animation buff back. You can just, you know, uh, hit the aim, like, right mouse button a couple of times, then it goes away. But there's a couple of things that are just, like, oh, man, it aggravates me so much. Yeah, I, man, the I, max... I want the footstep bug gone. I'm somebody who, de who depends very heavily on sound in situations. Oh, okay, yeah. And just hearing myself trotting in place like that, or even worse, if you're in Hoss and you're splashing in place in the water, you can't yeah. hear anything past that. Mm -hmm. I literally never listen to the to the in-game sound. I always have music on, so I can't really comment on that. 
Is this really? Is that annoying? I, I can imagine, but. And yeah, in, in situations where I need to hear what's going on, like if there's an infiltrator or I think mm -hmm. someone's oh, yeah. flanking me. Yeah. I mean, I'm listening for footsteps and I'm yeah, hearing them course. all the time because they're mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, I, I never knew what the footstep buff was about, but yeah, that's really damn annoying. Okay. But what if what if in my head I'm thinking of, you know, running silently, right? My toes before my heels and stuff. And the mm. game just doesn't do what I want it to do. Come on. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's, I, it's a really big issue, those little things I mean, that are actually pretty damn yeah. big. I mean, I've, I've put up a series of videos entitled Sound is Vital, and I have literally once tracked down a cloaked infiltrator because I heard him he re reloading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It sound, yeah, you can use sound very effectively in Planetside, too. Yes. If it works, you spot you two meters uh -huh. away. And you turn oh, around yeah. and you look and it's like, yeah, buddy, yeah. I got you. Yeah, I've taken down a few more that way. Yeah, more than two. Yeah. And then they're gonna, you know, accusate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, come on, David, please, you know, for the love of Planetside, for the love of Oraxis, right? You wanna, you know, see those those space battles, uh, you know, in 10 years when the game works, maybe? Well, I'm kind okay. of afraid that these, bo these books are already in the game for a long time, aren't they? Or are they new since Direct X11? Ooh, then... Uh, a little from column A, a little from column B. There's been some that have been there pretty much since launch. I know that the, like, the butt sliding dead person running around bug has pretty much been there the entire time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the footstep one, I think, came in more after DX11. Okay. It's, it's mm. just... I, I, I think it makes a good point. The, 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 the books mm -hmm. are mainly enough for like like seven years, and I think I think they want yeah. to fix it, but they just don't know how. I think that's it's an possible. issue. It, it's entirely possible they can't find these bugs to fix them. But, but look, as on the even okay. Oh, the, another thing, right about the the jump pads on Howling Pass, right? So apparently they um, before that got you know that got bro that they broke that uh, NSOs weren't able to use faction specific jump pads, so they changed it so they could, and now only the can. NSOs can use it. <laughs> yeah. So. Then there's like how many players playing NSO? Five on every server? I don't know. But uh, how, like, come on, they they are not even <laughs> fixing it. They are they are fixing one thing for one percent and then breaking something for the ninety nine others. Like kind of like juggling bugs. Uh, yeah, but it's not even you know if 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 they would do it the other way around, I could say even then it's broken. But then it would be kind of acceptable in the daybreak universe right in any mm -hmm. competent developer universe it wouldn't be accepted but in <laughs> this i would say it's good right but this is just the <laughs> other way around so even for planet side it's bad you know and uh, come on it's just it's so disheartening every time i would i think come on can we get something good and then it's just like daybreak does something else and i'm just come on guys please, then i'm also please, curious have you guys seen the mapulon video talking about rel the what? The oh, video. Yeah. it was basically <laughs> one big meme just talking about rel said this and rel did this and of course yeah. he um yeah he's a public figure so he's a scapegoat as well but um, then, actually, in the comment section of Reddit, an interesting discussion started, and Rel said that they are actually working on uh, improving the vehicle gameplay. And from <laughs> what I've heard, no, but for real, uh, from what I've heard, they talk with a few guys. Uh, actually, I don't know if you guys are in the Planets I Do Discord. No? Yes? yes? Okay. No, I'm not. But they, Rel actually contacted people from the pilot and from the view, uh, vehicle part of the Discord. And actually, they are actually talking about how to improve. They're talking with the players, they're talking with the experts, so to say, <clears throat> about what has to the happen with vehicles. Experts. Oh, the experts. Oh, I thought you meant the ex players. Okay. Well, I'll call them out in a. P yeah, I think there was one. Um, I think Puff Daddy and Rel had like uh, an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you what think? happened there, but there was quite a <laughs> oh man, there was quite a quite a fight there, yeah. Yeah, there was quite some drama over there. But other than that, I think it is a step in a good direction that they start talking and they start to have 
healthy discussions like this? I hope so, because the game needs uh, quite a lot of health put back in. Like, they need a... I need a doctor at the head of Needler. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. They make me... Like, Planetside needs, like, a... Uh, I don't know, something that rejuvenates it. Like, but this is another problem, right? Like, it's it's really nice. Like, I really like it that they go and talk to the experts, right? But then, why don't they just re... Like, undo uh, Combined Arms Initiative, which it, which is mostly bad. Like, it's really simple. Like, they, they now they talk about, oh, we're gonna balance it, we're gonna talk to the, the good players, blah, 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 you know? And it's gonna take an uh, awful lot of time to balance all this stuff because it's a lot of stuff that needs to be balanced. And Daybreak doesn't know, so there, there needs to be a lot of communication and whatnot. Just revert it and go from there. It is much easier. But Daybreak, as they always do, they do something, then they need to fix that, and they don't undo it. They just, oh, let's go from this broken state and then take an awful lot of time with a lot of useless cosmetic updates in between and then i don't know do or may not do it you know it's just <sighs> i have a <laughs> you're passionate I, i'm one meter 90 i have a big there down below and i have a deep voice <laughs> oh man that guy yeah yeah that's what Entech means. The 5.2 gigahertz drawing you made on the map. Okay. See, I, right. I yeah. can't really speak too much on combined arms because I generally don't tank or fly. Um, but during the process, I noticed there were a lot of stages. They were seeming to ask for uh, like community input. And then before the community had a chance to input, they implemented the changes. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of pushed it out right out the door. And there were a lot of problems from that. And that pretty much upset me because, I mean, like, it's not going to affect me too much personally since I don't play in those areas of the game. But yeah. you're disrupting a major part of the game for a lot of people. Exactly. And why didn't, why didn't they have a chance to uh, put input? Because Rel was salty. He got Dalton by Sky Knight. And Sky Knights are bad. And infantry plays are good. So, you know, let's nerf the Dalton. Wasn't that I'm not that long in the community, yeah. but wasn't there like complaints about vehicle gameplay before Command and Initiative as well? Yeah, of course. It, it's but always always complaints. Yes, but know? there's always like a discussion, and this side wants this, and the other side wants this, and then yeah. But the they... outcry after Combined Arms Initiative was not like just a couple of people. You know? No, like, okay. They they said <laughs> okay, we're gonna so. What they did from memory, right? I don't know if this is 100% correct. So correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, mm -hmm. right? So like when they implemented, I think it was early 2017, they said, we're going to get this on PTS for a week. You guys are going to be able to test it. And then we're going to bring it to live. And then they just put it on live. And everyone was like, guys, come on, yeah. this is not okay. And they just, you know, they didn't do anything about it. So, and now they're gonna talk to the, so now it just, to me, it looks like they're just gonna, yeah, guys, we want to communicate, you know, all this, it's fine, community, shh, you know, don't be too salty, yeah, but the damage has already been done, you know, the damage has been done, uh, all those plays are not, most, I guess most of them are not coming back that left the game, and when you say I'm not playing in those uh, like, like dimensions of the game or uh, whatever, like I'm not playing the vehicle game or the air gameplay, like that's completely valid, of course. But in the end, if the play count is gonna lower, you are also suffering because you don't get as many people to shoot at, and the the game is gonna decline even for you, even if you don't play on those. Yeah, uh, I mean, things. yeah, I, so I, I, it's bad I, for everyone. Yeah, I'm trying. I want to be open to people who play the game differently than I do. Exactly. Yeah. I have n no problem with them getting some of the things they want too. I mean, I, I know some of those, some of the pilots are sky knights who think that infantry should just be free per serpinatas. 
And I know that there are some infantry who think vehicles should just be a ride to the next base and nothing else. Give it an old PPA. Can't, yeah, you can't have it either <laughs> way. It, it's got to be a balance. And I am willing to talk to and listen to people who excel and are experienced exactly. in sections that I don't play, so long as it's going to be uh, reciprocal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yep. I'm, a, I'm a ground pounder, but I'm not like an infantry peasant who just can't do anything else. I mean, I don't, Ooh. I mean, I don't play tanks much because I generally go solo and I can't fly in the game because it sets off my vertigo and mm. vomiting all over my keyboard is not a fun experience. Yeah, I mean, so there's I, a lot of you, keyboards when you play a lot of air, so. Yeah, it's, it just, it, it doesn't work out for me, but, you know, just, I want other people to be able to enjoy the game too. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I want to finish this podcast with the last topic, and that is really broad, but it talks about the future of Final Fantasy 2, and what we've seen that right now, Planet of the Arena is not really the biggest hit, not population-wise. <laughs> However, though, and I think this is pretty interesting, that the average population has gone up since Planet of the Arena, because people hear the name Arena, or hear the name Planet of Sight, and they go back to Planet of Sight 2. That's interesting. Um... So nevertheless, whatever happens, it's somewhat good for Planet Side 2. However, though, uh, if you see the big line, it still declines. Uh, where do you see you guys see Planet Side 2 in over three years? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I see Planet Side 2 in another three years, to be honest. I That's mean, fair. Yeah. I mean, there's got, there has to be an, a, an overarching vision for the game, and I don't think there is one right now. Yeah, I think they're exactly. just basically they're just basically coming up with new things on the fly to try, and it's it's not something that can really last that long. I mean, we've gotten this far, but I mean, basically yeah. the major thing is that it's a massive multiplayer experience that isn't duplicated really anywhere else. Yes, and basically it's just there's only so many more things you can do to pump up the, the uh, population numbers without something major. And something major requires a, a major plan going forward. Something major, something dope. Well, the, the, <laughs> the dope plans are basically sanctuary and usher in the long term, the long, long, yeah. long term. Yeah, but you know, look, <coughs> this is, hey, the thing is, <laughs> the HMO, yo, the biggest player EU, you know what's up, man? When he's going to Emerald, you know, he's gonna farm the whole server. Okay, but serious now. The, I feel like I'm repeating the same stuff all the time. So I'm sorry if I am, but, you know, hey, I'm not sorry. The thing, there's, there's, there have been many people that, that said in the past, oh, Planet Side 2 is going to die, you know, in, uh, next year or... Yeah, that never happened. Two years, blah, blah, blah. And I don't think... Um, I'm not going to say, oh, it's going to die in this or that time frame. Yeah, exactly. Kali Burners, poke around on Discord. Oh, no, you're not allowed. Don't do that. Otherwise, they know I said it and I'm not going hired. Okay. But, but so I'm not going to say anything like that. But as, as Rogue Wolf said, there is no overarching theme or thought or any plan. Like this. They have a roadmap for plans at Arena, but you can already see. You know, we already pointed out the mistakes they made in our opinions, which I think are very valid. Um, and I'm not so sure they are gonna, you know, carry on with that roadmap if it's gonna be like this. And it's the same thing with Planet Side 2. They need to fix the underlying problems first, then have a clear communication going on to the players that say, hey, we are trying our best to fix this game, make it for you, and not for the back of Daybreak with the Daybreak cash of credits for the you know, this new NS11A variant, you know? So, exactly, they are too busy pleasing the investors, whoever that is. Russians. You know, maybe it's Ralph's parents and he just wants to be this honorable uh, <laughs> daimyo uh, tan tanto guy. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, it's just, guys, Daybreak, just please, you have a great game on your hands, you know? They, I feel like they don't realize that enough. The game is fantastic, right? It's a fantastic game, but it's not so fantastic at the moment. The, the concept is fantastic. The execution yeah, but the is... the execution is exactly favor. Yeah. 
you hit it. the nail right on the head. Exactly. There we well, go. Unfortunately, we it is the I best just, we have. It's just like that. Uh, well, yeah. Shia LaBeouf, I mean, just do it. So, you know. If it was easy, a lot of other people would be doing it too. Yeah. There'd be like a whole lot of competition out there, but there isn't. I mean, but... what <laughs> else on the market is trying to do this? Well, Anzac just finished his uh, his degree in uh, computer magic, uh, whatever game development, or he's gonna do that, right? So, Anzac, you are the one to carry the torch. You're gonna save Daybreak. I'm gonna talk on Twitch in Faber's channel because my PC is too weak, and then we're gonna make Planet Side Two great again. There we we call go. it Side Planet, and then we we'll make it better than it was. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna build. We're gonna build a planet site, and the current Daybreak developers are gonna pay for it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I got one. I got one. I've one final thing. Uh, during the week, uh, Mr. What's his name? Damn it, Mr. Doku. Doku said he's not any longer making weapon models for Planet Site Two or Planet Site Arena. Yeah. You guys gonna miss him? Kinda. I mean, I uh, I I like the designs, but there was a lot of repetition. Okay. And, and and those uh the TR weapons he made, those iron sights were not designed to be looked through. First thing you do with one of those weapons is slap a reflex sight on it. I think that happens yeah. on every weapon though. I've, I've never I've, I've never I've used the that. iron sights. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. I, I don't even know why they even make an iron sight on these models anymore. I'm curious, <laughs> are there any statistics on mm -hmm. well, I know a few people upper, who, who prefer the iron sights. Okay. But I found that like a lot of the base weapons, a lot of the like the first generation weapons that came out of the game had better iron sights than some of the ones that came after. I don't know. I I never use them. Right. <laughs> so uh, I only buy a weapon when I have enough for the attachments as well, and I don't really have that problem anymore because I have too many certs, so it's all mm. good. Yeah, filthy, but still, I mean, it's mm. it isn't bad, but. Uh, the reflex side is still better. Why would you and use as it? for the Doku things, I don't really mind. Like, it's sad in a sense that that he's leaving, that someone yeah. outside of Daybreak is leaving Daybreak in a sense because it shows that he doesn't think that there is. I can't speak for him, right? So it's a little no, hard yeah. to say that. But it's to me, it seems okay. To me, it seems that he has he thinks there is not much going on. Because otherwise he would be making models, right? Um, Definitely. So it's sad in a way. On another way, I don't really. But that, mind. that's for me the big question. Does does it mean there won't be many new weapons in the future? Because I know I think the new assault rifles will launch soon. The new ARs. Mm -hmm. Those are Doku design. But to me, that kind of says like, hey, um, well, we're not making that many new weapons anymore. This is what we have, and this is good. Which might be okay because I think the weapon there's like quite a good variety of weapons right now. There's a lot of weapons. They should just don't uh, don't focus on the weapons, on the prowler shield, you know, eh, all the little things. Exactly, Doc P designed TM. There we go. <laughs> uh, hello, fellow Orexians. Uh, hello, is a Doc P stream here? No, uh, no. that's not his voice, of course. I can't do that. <laughs> but uh, oh. I did it. I said it again. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, Twitch, there we go. Don't ban favor, please. <laughs> but yeah, just focus on the core elements of the game. Fix what is broken, and uh, you know, keep what is not. You know, don't fix what is not broken. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you're gonna remodel weapons, remodel the Vanu weapons so that they don't look like fish in plate armor. <laughs> I mean, don't model, don't remodel like the Orion, the the anchor and the MSW, please, because that, that those that, are okay. Yeah, those but are okay. A lot of the VS weapons just look like fish in plate armor. They just there was I was watching a, a Borderlands three stream today. Uh, Ozzy was streaming, and they had this one Eridani weapon. It looked awesome. It was like like shiny steel, and parts of it opened up. And there's not enough of that in the. Uh, in the Vanu arsenal. I mean, it should look more alien. It should look more experimental. A, a, a Ridani weapon? Are you serious? No. If I'm remembering it correctly, yeah. <laughs> sorry, it was a... Essence. Yeah, <laughs> it's bad. I'm sorry. Okay. It's like almost German humor level. Fuck, man. That's so... Wee. I want to go there.
But I do see we already talked for like over an hour right now. So guys, we're going to yeah. quickly wrap it up. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this uh, Planet Arena discussion today. I hope you will try it in the future again, though. I'm going to play a bit yeah. with Sirius now, so uh, that's going to be interesting. Hello, fellow Arachians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, do you guys have anything you want to say still? I'm, I'm willing to give Arena another shot if they can fix the technical issues and get more content. I'm not I'm yeah. not done with the game, but as it stands now, I don't find it enjoyable. Okay, I would say play one once with me when we have like the big events. So this I think okay. really enjoyable. Yo, Dark Young, you're too late. You just came in as we <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> okay, as guys. I said, Anzac is just finished his his. Uh, I'm gonna send you guys over to Full Metal. He's a new streamer, so uh, give him some love. Guys, <laughs> right, see you later. Thanks. Until the next podcast. You planet side. <laughs>